David Yoshimura, Chef David Yoshimura of Restaurant Nisei, Restaurant Nisei in SF on Shattuck Avenue, opening, I believe this next month, I could be wrong though, we just, literally just talked about it on the podcast, but my mind's drawing blank, but that's okay, Um, so David Yoshimura actually, so this is what happened. All right, I'm doing the truffle shuffle class, the lamb with mom's rice and slow roasted carrots, okay, Uh, which was a great success, Uh, shout out to uh, truffle shuffle for all of their efforts, Uh, you know, hyping it up beforehand, uh, getting all the, all of the, uh, you know, Instagram influencers to to cook it off and, and show it off, you know. Uh, to try to get more people in the class, we had a good uh, turnout. So the class went well. We did a cool intro. Went through a wall of sheetrock for it. So I had a lot of fun out there. So the original plan was to do the class here at the ranch where I'm at. That couldn't happen because of other prior engagements that uh, that Truffle Shuffle had, so they flew me out. This is very spur of the moment. They're like, oh yeah, you're flying out in two days. Like, okay. Uh, and honestly, I love that. Uh, I wish that was my life. I would like one day to be in a city, and then the next day I'm in another city, and then the next day I'm in another country, you know? Um, I had to figure out a way to make that happen. I think this podcast is going to afford me a way to do that. Uh, whether it's just, you know, getting me over to places because I have to do the podcast. Um, but as you know, I'm trying to turn this into a full-time job, uh, before I open my restaurant about 10, 15 years from now. Yeah, that's right. 10, 15 years from now. I'll make sure I got life experience before I open that shit. We're all on our own journey. Just remember that. You don't need to be the youngest Michelin star chef in order to uh, to achieve success in this industry, okay? So don't beat yourself up out there, all those people that are about to be 29, and they're like, well, what the fuck? I don't have my Michelin stars yet. It's okay, bro. It's okay. So I fly out to Oakland, and one of my boys, uh, Chef Andres, who was the last episode, hit me up and was like, hey, uh, I'd love to be on the podcast I'd love to have you. He didn't say that. He said, I'd love to have you in for, for dinner, which in, piqued my my curiosity. So I checked them out on Instagram. And there it was, Snail Bar. Opening soon here, last week of June, first week of July, something like that. And Andres has worked at all types of places. I mean, WD-50, Muguritz, uh, Cezanne, all these, you know, higher echelon restaurants that... uh that are known for turning out great chefs. So he spent time over there and then decided to open up something a little bit more casual in Snail Bar and also shared his passion about uh, uh, natural wine. So I love natural wine, by the way. I got I got to kind of get to know it in Paris because everybody that's just what every restaurant I went to was serving is natural wine, and they're, they're so into it. You know, um, there's got to be someone. Somebody's excited about something. I get excited about something. I don't know what that. I don't know what that is, but uh, I'm happy for people that uh, that are so passionate about something that when they talk about it, they they animate, they uh, they smile, they laugh. You know, they get excited telling you uh, about about the thing, about the wine and how it was made and who 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 it is and where it comes from and. And how long they've been doing it before they actually bottled anything. I mean, wine is fucking insane. Um, shout out to Micah Clark, by the way, and Karina Barrera. Micah Clark, Karina Barrera, shout out to you. Uh, I need to have Micah Clark on the show. Although, I bet if I asked him, he'd be like, no, David, I am not going to be on your show. But I don't know. You know, I got to ask him. So if anybody knows Micah, let him know. I want him to be on the show. You know, him and Karina. Had a beautiful baby. Uh, she was the GM of Charter Oak when I was there, and he is the director of wine operations, I believe, still for the restaurant at Meadowood and the Charter Oak. The guy's a boss. 
Guy is a boss. Um, so I show up to Oakland, do do an impromptu podcast uh, with Andres. I just brought my gear with me. I didn't even know if I was doing a podcast or not. So I get there. Uh, we do the podcast at Snail Bar. He mentioned something about David Yoshimura. He says, yeah, we're going out for drinks later. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll join you. Um, yeah, I said that to be nice. At that point, I had so much shit going on. I even tried to fucking hang out with Andrew Chang and fuck that up. So shout out to you, Andrew. Uh, I'll see you in October. And we're actually going to do a bang bang. We're going to go to uh, Snail Bar for lunch, Nisei for dinner. All right. So look out for me and Andrew. We're going to take this town over. Um, after I did a podcast with Andres, uh, I helped Truffle Shuffle cater a party. I saw good friends of mine, Marcus Krause and Dalton Thomas. Um, shout out to them. They both worked at me with me at the restaurant in Meadowood. And uh, Marcus Krause was about 36 at the time. I was 24. So I think, you know, at that age, you think that 36 is old. So I said, I told them, I'm like, you are the Danny Glover of the kitchen. You are just too old for this shit. Um, and to this day, he still remembers that joke. So it must have been a good one. But uh, he invited me over to his house for dinner. Had beautiful carnitas there with Dalton and Marcus. So shout out to you guys. Uh, Dalton's also working on a new project. I don't know what the fuck it is. He's so secretive. But when I go over there next time, I'll fucking hit him up and, and we'll do a podcast. He also did a dinner with Kevin Finch, I think, a couple days ago. Um, I'm not sure what they called it. They probably didn't call it anything. They probably just called it. We're doing a pop up with Dalton and and Kevin Finch. Um, so then, after I hung out a little bit, David Yoshimura hit me up late at night. Was like, "Hey, I'm drinking with Andres, and uh, when are we going to do a podcast?" So I said, "All right, let's do it tomorrow morning." He's like, "Okay." So I met him at Restaurant Nisei that is currently un- under construction. They're currently building the. Uh, the space out right now so should be open here soon and definitely gonna hit it up but uh super excited to have him on he's a disciplined man very disciplined very serious i'm sure he likes to have a good time but his demeanor is very very calm you know um in charge you know what i mean so definitely all signs of a great chef so i can't wait to see you know, how he starts his restaurant, grows his restaurant, and um, brings his food to the next level. Other than that, we got some shout-outs, shout-outs. Shout-out to Chef Lee Gregory. Chef Lee Gregory, shout-out to you. Uh, You've been giving me a lot of love on IG, so I just wanted to return the favor. Uh, His IG is Bobo Berry Crunch, B-O-B-O-B-A-R-R-Y Crunch, Bobo Berry Crunch. That is very original. Um, So shout out to you, Chef Lee. Uh, He has a, I believe, a brewery restaurant called Alewife in Richmond, um, Richmond, Virginia. Alewife in Richmond, Virginia, not Richmond, California. But uh, I'm gonna check that out when I'm in when I'm in Virginia. And through doing this podcast, I've, I've realized that there's a lot of cities that you don't really think about, don't come to the forefront of your mind when you think about great food. You know, think about great food. It's L.A., New York, you know, San Francisco. Uh, but nobody ever mentions Minneapolis, uh, Richmond, Virginia. You know, all these places that have amazing food. And, uh, it's not really on the map like that, or I guess it's just not top of conversation because whenever we talk about restaurants, it's always, you know, major, the major cities that are hidden at home, um, wherever those may be. Shout out to chef saw saw saw, uh, on Instagram. Um, he just did this thing. It's called saws Burmese kitchen. I think he's making uh, like chili paste and chili oils from his uh, mother's recipe or his grandmother's recipes. 
So uh, shout out to him. You know, I'm I'm in the in the phase of trying to find out what my roots are and trying to be a little bit more conscious about where I'm coming from and you know where I get my ideas, uh, how I think, why I think that way. You know, all these things are important. So he was formerly the chef of Tallulah, which is a Jeremy Fox restaurant. Uh, it's a taqueria in LA. Um, and the first time I met Chef Saw, he came up to the restaurant of Meadowood and he was cooking tortillas for a course on Jeremy Fox's menu. And I really thought it was cool that, you know, he, he brought all his top chefs, you know, of his places, Brittany Cassidy, um, um, Saw, and Andy Dubrava. Uh, he also brought in other, uh, other cooks as well. But, you know, those are the top three that were became the chefs of his restaurants and were the chefs of his restaurants at that time. Um, so shout out to him for bringing them and uh, connecting us, right, in that way. These things, things start to happen, I really strongly believe, and I've been looking at this. Things start to happen about like seven years to six years before you even thought about something. You know, like I think about working on this ranch and I think about knowing Tyler. And the fact is, if I didn't go to Johnson & Wales, which means if I didn't make that decision two years beforehand, then I wouldn't have met Tyler. It's, which fueled a lot of my decision making, right? Moving to California, shaping my career uh, without me even knowing it. And then here I am today working at this ranch that he also worked at. Um, and, uh, I just couldn't be more grateful, you know, it's not a restaurant, it's not three stars, it's not all the glory, you know, it's, it's hard work, it's, you're feeding, uh, blue collar workers, ranch workers, you know, and, and they don't want any fucking caviar, you know, they don't want to, <laughs> they don't want that shit, you better cook some fucking delicious, moist, grilled chicken, maybe some quinoa. Maybe some some couscous. I've been on the couscous tip lately. A strong chicken stock, you know. Grate some carrot in there. Oh, so fucking good. A little bit of butter. I'm getting carried away now. But uh, yeah. So the I guess I'm gonna try to formulate a theory at some point as to what that is or how many years it is actually. I'm sure it's different in every case, but be cool to pinpoint sort of a, a scale of like if I think about this if this is an idea today when will it be reality and how long does it take to get there why did it take so long should it have taken so long um, you know there is no rush now this is the human race um, but really we should just be racing to be better human beings uh, racing towards anything else but being fucking nice people, kind to each other. Um, so also shout out to Jeremy Fox. I'm sure I'll see him in October. Uh, this trip to San Francisco was very on a whim. So, you know, it's not one of those, I, I, I can't plan for shit out here. I don't know when I'm going to be leaving here. You know, I'm very secluded right now. Uh, so it's hard for me to get out, but when I do get out, you know, I'm going to hit the ground running and do some podcasts while I'm out there so you guys, so I don't miss any more weeks. So I still owe you a podcast. At some point, I'll put it out. Um, I guess that makes the number of podcasts go up one because I missed one last week. I'm very hard on myself. You know, I felt bad all week about it. And then I'm like, I'm like, all my listeners hate me. I'm like, you know what? They don't. They don't give a shit about you, Dave. You know, like at the end of the day, yeah, you listen to the podcast, but come on. You're not over here paying my rent and changing my diapers. You know what I'm saying? I don't wear diapers. Sometimes I wish I did, though, because then you can get more work done. 